Hi, friends. I decided to, call, to cover today keto diet because it's coming to my attention again and again and again. I had a heated discussion with one of my clients a couple of months ago because she saw Dr. Oz. And I, it, two days ago, this topic come again because one of my clients was on keto diet, sent me a YouTube video that somebody showed the physiology book saying that there is no damage to the liver whatsoever from the keto diet. Keto diet promised you that it's, you will lose weight, low cholesterol, will help manage your diabetes. Step two, more energy, brain, brain for fog will be lifted and improve blood pressure. Yes, it will. But you will create many different problems. Keep in mind that the diet was created to treat drug resistance epilepsy. Use it only for this reason. You can use the ketogenic di uh, diet for, for one month, no more. And even that may create a damage. You will see, I will talk about that. So three problems with keto diet comes immediately into my mind. Let's talk about them. Number one, dysbiosis. Number two, acidosis. Number three, damage to the liver and kidney. Let's go. Um, dysbiosis, diet eliminates carbohydrates, not only simple, but also complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are prebiotic. It's, it creates in the digestive tracts, the structure, it's creates a housing for good, but for beneficial bacteria. So once when you eliminate complex carbohydrates out of your diet, that housing, that good structure from the digestive tract eventually get eliminated and you create this biosis. People are often say that, oh, the moment I discontinue complex carbohydrates, my gas and bloating went away. Yes, it's possible because people eliminate, like beans are very common gassy food. So, but uh, do not, do, I mean, quinoa, amaranth, buckwheat. So all of this complex, but they don't create gas in this. Brr stays for brown rice. There is a wild rice, red rice, kamut. So do not eliminate complex carbohydrate out of your diet. Number two, um, keto creates acidosis. Um, during the keto diet, because of the high product, of, due to high fat concentration, um, oxidation is happened. And because of oxidation is so high, the plasma level of COD stays for superoxide dismutase level significantly get decreased. And uh, superoxide dismutase, it's a, um, it's, um, enzyme when the oxygen get broken down in in mitochondria it's uh gets split it and uh, reactive oxygen that has a one electron spinning around that it becomes crazy it's, that's what um that's called um oxidative process right and as this um electron uh, oxygen runs around with this crazy electron it creates damage to dna one in the absence of superoxide dismutase, that electron creates a lot of damage to DNA. It's caused cancer. It is cancer. The second reason for that is diet is often high on protein and the um, protein get incorporated into urea cycle. Uh, and then it's, get ex some of those uh, protein in, in, amino, in form of amino acid form uh, ammonia and some get in uh, through the urea cycle get incorporated in different amino acids and that by itself contribute to cancer formation here is ammonia accelerated proliferation of the breast cancer i am the expert on that listen to me i posted the article in the description below look at that read that let's go to problem number three number three damage to liver in and the kidney uh, many years ago, there was a, a big discussion that um, uh, should be a differential diag uh, keto diet should be included into differential di um, diagnosis of acidosis. So keto diet creates an acidosis. Here is an example, um, very recent that I found for you. 53 years old female was on a low carbohydrates diet. She developed... Um, uh, Gexastomia, uh, it means dry mouth, okay? Na nausea. Nausea probably because the damage to the liver and abdominal pain, probably colitis and she developed gastritis. Although, give you credit, she lost 17 pounds in 22 days. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. So she ended up in the emergency room with a diagnosis, anion gap metabolic acidosis, 
viscitosis. So she is burning fat as a source of energy in your body, losing weight, and develops acidosis. So this is an emergency condition that be, have to be treated in the uh, in the ER. So high consumption of fat from keto diet means fatty liver, and I will talk about that in a second. Ammonia that's uh, formed out of amino acids, which is protein, creates a liver damage. And uh, acidosis put extreme stress on the kidney. Now, let's go to, um, to the blackboard. And actually, I will, uh, I will draw for you uh, and explain this concept a little bit more. Let's go. As always, I already pre-draw for us my favorite picture of digestive tract. This is the mouse with the teeth and you put food here. So this is the keto diet. So you put here fat. Um, fat is actually, when it gets into digestive tract, it's get absorbed. In order to absorb the fat, we need to produce a lot of bile from the liver. So this is the liver get produced here into the small intestine. That and the effect of bile fat get emulsified and only that it's get absorbed into the bloodstream. With this bloodstream, this fat, so let's see, this is the fat, is not going anywhere, but first it will go into the liver. Because there is no sugar to use as a source of energy during the exercise or any physiological process. The fat that actually stored it in the body uh, in form of abdominal fat or any place around the organs will get used. <clears throat> However, if because of the keto diet is so high in fat, concentration of the fat is high in the bloodstream and it's get deposited here in the liver. And the fat deposits often seen uh, on the ultrasound in patients on keto diet after one month on keto diet, okay? So that's one problem. So it's developed fatty liver after about one month on the on keto diet. The second important point to understand is protein. Protein comes in form of uh, meat, uh, fish, uh, chicken, and it's broken down in the digestive tract into individual amino acids. Let's say they are looking like that. Those long chain protein, when they are broken into amino acids, amino acids get absorbed. Amino acids has a concent high concentration of nitrogen in them. This nitrogen have to go someplace. It cannot just stay in the bloodstream. So it goes through the urea cycle and often it gets um goes through the urea cycle to um in, into the liver to get actually to get rid of that uh, nitrogen so in the liver uh, ammonia get formed so let's write here ammonia ammonia is extremely toxic substance first of all ammonia can damage the liver if you don't consume or person does not consume enough anti and of antioxidant liver does not have uh, infinite amount of glutathione that's a glutathione is substance everybody's crazy now oh let's let's buy glutathione let's consume it the reason especially people on a uh, peri diet ha have to have it although it's difficult to absorb glutathione because the ammonia that accumulates here in the liver it consumes glutathione antioxidant. So ammonia, does, excuse me, the liver does the next step. It's convert ammonia into um, less toxic substance called urea and excrete this urea into the bloodstream and the urea is neutral substance. And this urea goes into the kidneys and that's through the kidneys we pee it out. So... The urea is not a problem for the kidney whatsoever. The only problem is high concentration of ammonia. Now, because of the fat and protein have a high concentration of hydrogen ion and they get uh, broken down in our cells. So the cells um, will use fat as a source of energy and they expel this hydrogen ion into the environment. Hydrogen ion has a positive uh, charge it will change the acidity. It will go, not in the air, it will go obviously into the blood. 
create an acidic environment in, in, around, in the cell, around the cell, and in the bloodstream. Acidic environment, we are fighting, every, every single person is fighting, and people who are have a cancer or some uh, any kind of disease that they, all day they try to say, oh, we need to decrease acidity in our body. This hydrogen ion create extreme, create extreme acidity in our body. The body cannot tolerate pH in the blood or concentration pH, or excuse me, not it's not digestive tract, pH here in the blood, let me write, is very, very tightly controlled. This is a life um, uh, it's a matter of life for our body. You cannot change pH of the of, uh, of the blood. But as concentration of hydrogen ion is going high and higher, what the body does, it tries to get rid of that, and it does it through the kidneys. So the kidneys is the organ that will pee out this hydrogen ion, even against all odds. So you will pee acid, okay, if the concentration of this hydrogen ion high. The only one problem, when the hydrogen ion gets into the kidneys, it's also create the damage to the kidneys because it's an acidic environment. You basically pour into your kidney acid that, that it's not supposed to be there. So um, those are the three points I want to make, uh, make about um, the damaging effect um, um, keto diet. Let me just uh, pause the video. Okay. The bottom line is, if you plan to go on keto diet, make sure that you stay don't stay on that more than one month. And if you have any problem, even before that, just discontinue. If you want to lose weight, there are better ways to lose weight than go on keto diet. Such a drastic weight loss is not very good. And damage, long-term damage from the keto from the keto diet is not um you know something to to be uh to be easy about okay guys thank you very much for your attention like subscribe bye bye for now